Hello and welcome to the Dice Dice Baby podcast. This won't be our usual Curse of Strahd episode. This is more of just a chinwag to see the latest news with D&D and just maybe a review of the last episode. How is everyone? I'm great, thank you. All good. All good, thank you. There's only uh, myself, aka Gamma, the Dungeon Master, aka the Dungeon Master, <laughs> <laughs> and yourself, aka Elias. Elias the Grizzly. Elias the Grizzly, mate. Two man down again, sorry. Yeah, That's sorry. all right. Sorry, <laughs> it's only a discussion, as long as we're there for the the real shit. That's all that matters. That's what everybody's been waiting for. Yeah. I was thinking we can go into a little bit of a review of the last episode and sort of what, uh, how we thought it was played, especially from the DM's point of view. I think that would be quite good to see like how we, uh, how well we played it, that kind of thing, and uh, our opinions as well. Yeah, I think that sounds cool. Yeah, should we start with the DM? Yeah, go for it. What do you want to know? Okay. Um, I'm gone. I was going to say, so what is your thoughts on, on how the session went? Was it how you expected uh, in that house? Because obviously we were spent a lot of time in the house. This is like the second sort of episode we've spent now fanning around in this house. Is that what you expected or do you expect us to be in and out? Um, yeah, I don't think there's a quick way of doing it because naturally when people play D&D, &D, you, you are inquisitive. You know, you want to find all the different nooks and crannies, what secrets there are, if there's any treasure. So I think you can take it at your own pace, really. Um, the, the way that you've gone about it, you are, I mean, you kind of go in from previous campaigns where people, you, you're asking specific questions rather than like, oh yeah, can I make a perception check? You know, you're asking, can I make a perception check on the walls to see if there's anything that's loose or shouldn't be where it is? So I think you've developed... I did a lot but of like you, you're playing styles from previous <clears throat> campaigns because you, you know sort of know what to expect, but I don't think there's any quick quick way through it. Originally, it, it's an optional thing to be honest, and it's made to put you as like your level one characters, and by the end of it, when you you get out of the house, your characters are level three. However, I read um, quite a bit of other dm's campaigns and how death house ran and it literally just turned into like a gauntlet where characters would die in at level one because that you're so squishy you know you've got like yeah. 10 hit points yeah i was gonna say if we were at level one like when i when i first made elias it was i think when i started at level one it was i think you had 14 hit points and yeah <laughs> you just get like well i mean that the ghosts even though time. they were even though they were children it lowers their hp from a normal ghost so yeah but um, like they're the damage that the ghosts do like the fucking necrotic damage well it was three uh, 3d6 plus four and did everybody know we started level three did we mention that we didn't yeah, actually so I... <laughs> I think that's a good well they know now <laughs> i think we mentioned it in our um introduction episode I don't know, the amount of shit we you, chatted. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you were having a go at me being a nasty DM for Tomb, and then I mentioned that you were all level three for this one. So, Oh, yeah, because I said how kind you were, a kind, yeah. gentle soul. Is that, yeah, oh, my God, go. that tangent just went on and on, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, you, yeah. That, the viewers, listeners should know. Um, That's good. Anything else you wanted to ask? Yeah. Yeah, so, so when I was knocking around, because like eventually we found that there's the there's like a, a secret tunnel going straight through the middle of the uh, of the house from from the top. It's only it's only when we go in the attic and actually look at a, a plan of the uh, of the house that we know that there's legitimately yeah. like a, a what do you call it an actual secret passage tunnel going down. Is that right? Yeah. So like yeah, when we're so knocking walls, are we meant to be able to spot it that way, or did you just not want us to find it that way? You wanted us to go up to the attic to find it. No, you there like there's certain criteria that you have to do to for the house to reveal its um, secrets to you. Basically, like that the house is sort of like a living thing. Yeah, it's I got um, that impression. And it's unless you, if you like if you didn't 
meet one of the this thing there's three things that you can do and if you don't get any of them you won't ever find the attic unless like yeah. you you know just go from top to bottom and just can do everything that you possibly can to um to find it but you yeah. managed to get two out of the three criterias done so nice i think the interesting thing about you know when um we went into that sort of like secret in the bookshelf where we went into that secret room yeah with that letter i found that le- letter quite interesting because it was like talking about like like a bastard son wasn't it or something like so the the bastard son is walter the baby because there's like because you know when i went into the um <laughs> into the baby's crib yes is that like what that's supposed to symbolize that's the yeah, well that was walter's walter's um crib room but it was where basically when Walter was uh, birthed, he was a stillborn, but oh. he wasn't the son of Elizabeth Durst. It was the nurse, nursemaid. They he hadn't the father Gustav had an affair with her. Oh, oh, Gustav, yeah. the dirty dog. She birthed Chugging Walter, but nurse. he was stillborn, and then um, she was murdered, mm. as you found out. Interesting. It, I was like, I don't know how you felt about the combat, how it came across when you encountered her, but I was a little bit disappointed that you met her in that room because there was the option, uh, if you don't go into that room first and you go into the nursemaid suite where the baby's crib is, that she's standing over the crib rocking it. And I, like, oh, I, I, I that really wanted... way too scary for me. Yeah, I really wanted that <laughs> I'm to... such a pussy with things like that. But it would have been... seen like a fucking ghost rocking a crib. That well, you wouldn't have known it was a ghost because she would, she would have been shrouded with oh, a, her okay. back to you and she only like acknowledges you if you step into the room. Uh, but it would have been better as well because both you'd separated at that point. So um, Gamma and yeah. Han were off elsewhere whilst you and uh, Gary ended up going into that room so it would have been you two fighting the spectre trying oh, to then man. like how do you work calling reinforcements for the other two do you know what yeah, I mean you have to, so, like, shout at the top of your voice and hope they sort of hear I suppose right like a puffle, I suppose so, yeah, so like, it's nice because it was like uh, there's so like there's all the different levels of the house there's so many like are, there must be so many different things you can like find in there as well because I suppose we've only kind of like scratched the surface of it really. There's not that much. I think we've done quite a good job of get like trying to find everything, haven't we? Tweaking. Yeah, there's not that much story that you've missed, if any, really. You like you you probably skipped over a bit of treasure, but yeah, Torx has been quite thorough in, in the search of the house. Yeah, he has. he's quite methodical with his character. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I think um, I, the thing that I've sort of been thinking about the most about is like how because you we've got like this mist like surrounding the house, which like just slowly kills you if you like touch it, kind of like Fortnite. <laughs> it's kind yeah, of like... it's, yeah, it's battle royale, <laughs> battle royale, D and D. Yeah, but you you just think like I just been thinking like how that's gonna how on earth we're gonna like move on and like also like what happened to the gypsies that transported us there well, well they're almost, not gypsies, it feels like we're in a they? dream we feel like we're in a dream at the moment that's why it's like happening because we've just been teleported we woke up pretty much and we're teleported to this new area was it yeah I mean, oh that's all... gonna be such a fucking prank if we're for all, yeah, for <laughs> all like, you know you <laughs> wake up <laughs> you've been spiked stripped of all your clothes and all your gear and you're just left in the woods oh you don't know no. you don't know <laughs> we just got roofied no that's what it feels like. Yeah, you... know. yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just because obviously this is your first experience of the new realm, and I just I, I want it to come across like as a creepy and spooky place. So yeah, I think that's like, like the whole what whole is it, thing. Sokovia? I mean, obviously, I mean, Bar- Bar- Sokovia. <laughs> <laughs> Plot it's twist. Got Iron, <laughs> got Iron Man and uh, Thor flying about. Barov- is it Barovia, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's um, mm. it's going to be interesting the further you get into the campaign. There's a lot that you can do. Yeah. 
I'm already very, like quite attached to a lot of this already. It's very sandboxy as well, so it's there's the scope mm. for things to just change. That's never a bad mm. thing, though. Yeah. Do you reckon there'll be more things to set on fire? We uh, set it on yeah. fire. Yeah. No, not really. Yet. Well, no, we did. We nearly set the dollhouse on fire, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. I like well, the uh, I like the combat. To be fair, I think obviously because they're like children, so you kind of just wanted to not. <laughs> you didn't want to kill them to start with, but there was like literally no talks, was like how no was convinced. Really trying that, to... <laughs> that speech was, <laughs> it was a really fucking insane. Good <laughs> I, it was almost as if it was rehearsed, but it wasn't. I was like, I couldn't very believe that was like it. off the cuff. Probably should have given the point of inspiration for it, but it was pretty insane. But like, there's this, there was clearly no talking to them, so I suppose it didn't really matter what we said. They weren't. They're not actually malicious until they're attacked first. They it's attacked like... us first. No, they nah, just tried to. Because Han fucking put his sword on the throat of the boy, didn't he? Did he? And yeah, then, like, he verbally threatened, threatened her. No, because yep. they were saying no. Because they were saying don't like, don't they need to leave? That's no, yeah, basically, they're they doing is trying to possess. Uh, yeah, they're Orin, just they they're just scared of abandonment, and basically, all that they wanted to do was just be in your like minds, uh, like yeah. that you're their hosts. Um, so they would have gone with you. Well, that's where daddy issues gets you. Uh, I'm actually scared about this basement. Yeah, and all the basements in general are just going to be fucking scary. If there's a clown in there, we're out. Yeah, I'm, fun fact, I'm, I'm it's, pretty there's sure. A hundred, there's a hundred horse-sized clowns. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I want to do going forward, um, just need to check that Torgs and um, Brad are okay with it, that I'm going to give you a 30-second timer, and if you don't make an action in that 30-second window... You forego your turn. You know, you, yeah. you get to think ahead. So when it comes to your turn, you know what you're going to do and you're not pausing and being like, uh, yeah, I'm going to fire off an Eldritch Cannon. That's just the worst for the flow of combat. Uh, and R and, and I always like to immerse myself fully. Like any discussion I like to have, I like to pretend I'm Gamma, like asking the guy, like I'll put on Gamma's voice and ask you, so like, so what do you think we should do now then? Like type of thing. Like I'd rather not go, okay, boys, what should we do? I'd rather yeah. ask as Gamma, and then hopefully I'll get a response in Gamma. I just like the role playing. I like to immerse myself in that. Like we should be yeah. fully like playing like, any conversation we have between each other. That's about the campaign should be in character, and then our actions should be described out of character. That's what oh, we should. We should do that. We should start that. We should not. It's, like, it's not easy to make. As soon as we start. But, yeah. Oh yeah, like obviously there's going to be points where we're just going to be laughing or whatever because of my shit Australian accent. <laughs> But we gotta gotta give it a go. Yeah, mate. Definitely. I I think it sounds. I think it's cool. For sure. I'm looking forward to the next episode where we hopefully fucking do something about this monster in the basement. I'm excited to see what it is. I've got a feeling it's a werewolf. Werewolf. It'd be like the. Uh, wolf. It'd be like the um, Lupin in uh, Thingy. <laughs> love the, yeah. no, I was I was thinking Love, Death, and Robots in. Um, Oh, oh shit, that's oh, sick. Like the, yeah. um, the, the dog soldiers one. The dog soldiers, they're fucking sick, man. I was thinking uh, the, the werewolf fight in Harry Potter. Oh, the yeah, werewolf like, fight in Harry Potter? Yeah, yeah Sirius Black and Superman. Lupin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. It's not as good as the dog fight in uh, Which Credit, though. Mm. I'd love Death Robots, though, to be fair. That thing's wild. Right then, shall we uh, move on to the next part? Um... We're going to have a little bit of a look at the sort of new D&D news and some like exciting things that are coming up, the people at yeah, D&D you've, have made. you've discovered some uh, gothic lineages Yeah, us. so it's, um, it's new playtest material, so Where's it, come uh, from? It, it's, um, it's just the creators of D&D, so, they've, so they aren't officially part of the game and aren't permitted in D&D Adventures League events, but you can feel free to use them. In your own adventures and it's basically just it's just like you oh, can what, what does that mean yeah there's like league league events i didn't even know that was a thing is that like a tour like a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament but for D D players what? yeah that's oh my god that's so sick but like official dms like following official rules and seeing how far yeah you can or what? oh can you imagine well, how like anal they'd that's, be that's where i aspire to be 
Yeah, that's your calling in life. I want to be, I want to be DM. officiating an a D and D adventurers league. I suppose like, ladies form an orderly queue. If an, if if enough people got into Dungeons and Dragons, like <clears throat> there'd be like full on tournaments, wouldn't there? Like, yeah, of course you'd it's have like e game and shit. referees. Yeah. Cock, imagine like if you had team like Team DDB. Oh my team god. Team DDB, mate. We, we, we would have, like, fuck shit up. Well, we, we wouldn't. Like, We'd just get everything wrong. <laughs> we could have like WWE entrance music and everything, man, coming out. Do, 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 do. We play. Would we hire some pro D and D players to take our place? And how would you get marked? Uh, like, how would you win? What, like, that, character. Man, we are pro. fucking pro D and D players. We have got our own podcast now. <laughs> no one can tell us we ain't pro D and D players. Well, yeah, true. There's levels to this shit, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, yeah, these um these gothic lineages. It says new race options are. I'm gonna pronounce this horribly, but Darmpier. I don't know. Is that how you say it, Darmpier? Does it be a damp dampire? Dampire. Like dampire. Like a, dampire. Like a vampire. Just a moist vampire. Dampire. <laughs> dampire. Dampier. I think dampier sounds best. Damp ear. Damp ear. Well, that's damp ear. It's just like... <laughs> oh, wet willy. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a damp ear, we've got the hex blood, which sounds pretty cool, and a reborn. So should we have a look at the um, the damp ear? So I'll read out the little um, yeah, let's have a look. blurb. Is. So it says, Poised between the worlds of the living and the dead, Damp ears retain their grip on life, yet are endlessly tested by vicious hungers. Their ties to the undead grant damp ears a taste of a vampire's deathless prowess in the form of increased speed, dark vision, and life-draining bite. Sounds interesting. Yeah, I've just been I've been reading at the the damp ear hungers. Um... How fucked this is so funny. <laughs> so every dampier knows a thirst slaked only by the living. This desire is a whisper in the mind, a tinge to the sight, a reflex constantly needing to be suppressed. So apparently you, you have to roll on a D8 and your hunger can be blood, flesh or raw meat, cerebral spinal fluid, Holy es- shit. esoteric humours. What does that mean? Uh, no esoteric idea. Esoteric humours. Psychic Google energy, esoteric humors. a color from one's appearance. How you, how can what? You dra- how can you drain that? <laughs> a color of one's appearance, dreams and life energy. Dream- <laughs> what? Oh, no, he just, I mean, he's just got a, he's just got a dream catcher in his hand. <laughs> the dreams one would be quite cool because you'd have to obviously say if you're in like a town like Neverwinter or uh, yeah yeah Waterdeep or something. And you know that, like, you're role playing your character, and you know that you need to feast. You would then have to, like, go into a tavern or break into someone's house and find a sleeping NPC and, like, it's, I like, think their the dreams. Most, the most brutal one sounds like the cerebral spinal, spinal fluid. fluid. How the yeah, fuck I mean, do you extract that? Drink do you just drink like... the spine like a straw? Like, you just re- oh. that's, that's a Brad yeah, the, but I, don't know I was going to say that the, the perfect person to ask that question would be Brad. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, uh, but Brad, that'd be cool. Like, can explain? you imagine, like, especially for like this campaign, because it's so like we're in kind of like a gothic um, horror movie anyway, aren't we? <laughs> in Curse of Strahd. Is this more of a role play class than an actual useful? Combat nah, because you you it? get a you get a vampiric bite, you get spider climb. Oh, okay. I think it'd just be it'd be cool to play like a evil character do you know what i mean i'm not i don't think it's necessarily evil it's like just an anti-hero i suppose it would be wouldn't it here's a good point so like when you so you use your vampiric bite it says when you use your bite to hit a creature that isn't a construct or an undead you can empower yourself in one of the following ways you can regain hit points equal to the damage dealt by the bite or gain a bonus to the next ability check or attack roll you make the bonus equals the damage dealt by the bite Ah, uh, so like you like drain life or ability points. Yeah, so you can from... get. So it's kind of like how like Elias when he uses his claw attacks, um, he gains two extra. He gains two hit point uh, hit points hit when points. he fit points. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just theory crafting here and like how you'd use that. Mm. Like if you're well, trying to get like, like super meta and like is that 
could that be yeah true? well there's like there's dam damp here orange origins oranges <laughs> <laughs> Fuck say i can't fucking talk um yeah the damp here oranges so there's just, i'll pick like a run pick a number between one and eight uh, eight seven seven you don't know your origins <laughs> <laughs> but you were but you were raised by vampires or other monsters uh there's another one you loved an immortal and you were willing to be transformed into a vampire to join them but your tragedy interrupted the transformation Ooh. okay that, that, that makes sense i'm just trying yes, to quite. so you could you could figure that out in like your origin story i suppose Oh, I read another thing just to completely sidetrack and there was this Go like that meme of that geezer sat there with a cup of tea yeah. So yeah. there was one on a D and D Reddit page, and it was like, um, like characters should not have excessive like backgrounds, storylines as a level one or two character. You know, like some people they'll do their story, their background, and they're like, yeah, I was a super fighter, and like, bro, you're level one, like you you've got as many hit points as like a talisman yeah. or like a general human. That I suppose that yeah, because you can just because as I suppose your character's story is the story you're playing as a level one character so you exactly you're new to you're almost like new to adventure in a level one so you shouldn't have like some crazy you're literally or... you're literally bilbo baggins at this point yeah effectively like you are useless i mean you could have i suppose a bit of training but like yeah. you can't have been like facing massive monsters and doing yeah. this and that and the other i, I mean think... i'm trying to think of our uh, current backstories is there any examples where we've got well yeah them? mine mine's a perfect example like i in my backstory i say that I was a gladiator. Yes, <laughs> I was like, taken as a slave and as a gladiator, and then I was like a famous gladiator. <laughs> oh, At the fuck. same time, <laughs> from a storytelling perspective and like fully immersing yourself in those characters, you know, it's, you, you've got to have something. But I think it's a good point to bring up. Like whenever, whenever I, I'm always conscious of that when I'm making uh, storylines for characters. So you've got to think well. Would this character realistically be s s killing like dragons and like you know? When s I mean, we don't really get that mm. excessive, but it's worth thinking about. Wow, we're getting so philosophical, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, very, very good, Ed. You, Thank you. You're Arthur. educating the masses of our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I was actually impressed. We've actually got like on the on the introduction, we actually got like 20, 20 views, and I know that's pretty shit compared to a lot of things, but. I thought it was only going to be like three. So. Is that just us playing on repeat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just me in the back. I've just got it constantly on a loop. <laughs> <laughs> the bad thing is, is if we've got 20 views on the introduction and then like 10 on the actual episode, which means that the introduction hasn't done its job and it ties people in. Yeah, that's ah. just... Fuck. Well... Fuck this then, boys. <laughs> yeah, it won't be bothered. No, the thing we don't. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, thanks for listening to the DDV podcast. It's been a pleasure. We're shit. <laughs> <laughs> so next on the um the gothic alignment is the hex blood where wishing fails ancient magic can offer a heart's desire at least for a time hex bloods are individuals infused with eldritch magic fey energy or mysterious witchcraft some who enter bargains with hags gain their deepest wishes but eventually find themselves transformed so, by the looks of it, hag. it's um, you hag. a bargain with a hag or other eerie forces has transformed your character into a magical being. She uh, wants some table of my here. meat! <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you gain, then? Dark vision, fey resilience, so you've got advantage on saving throws you make to avoid That's or amazing. end a charmed condition. Hex magic, you can cast the disguise self and hex spells with this trait. And you get something called a magic token. As an action, you can harmlessly pull out one of your nails, a tooth, Ooh. or a lock of hair. Oh, this that's token horrible. Is Why would you with do magic that? Until you finish a long rest. Oh my god, ripping your, like, toenail out. I'm not gonna... That's a very, uh, roleplay... Yeah, it sounds very roleplay heavy, ...style. Though. There's not a lot of combat-based traits that you can get with that. No. But I think in the next one, the Reborn... It says here that death isn't always the end. The reborn exemplify this, being individuals who have died yet somehow still live. Some reborn exhibit the scars of fatal fates. Fatal fates? <laughs> okay. Their ashen flesh, missing limbs, or bloodless veins make it clear that they have been touched by death. This would be cool for, say, if, you know, eventually, probably me, because I always fucking die. 
<laughs> like the chances are I'm gonna die quite soon in this campaign because I always do. So I think it would be cool to like bring maybe like have have Elias but as like a fucking zombie. Not but they're not zombies, they're like just they've got like faded memories and shit. What so you bring him back as a zombie? Bring him back, yeah. Um <laughs> This one of the re the, the one of the origins for the reborn is fucking hilarious. Oh. It says in public you pass as an unremarkable individual, but you can feel the itchy straw stuffing inside of you. <laughs> oh, so you're like a taxidermy like squirrel. <laughs> you're like a fucking scarecrow. Like what? <laughs> what? Oh, so sorry. weird. Fuck. But you can also be so it says like stitches behind your body's uh, mismatched pieces. And your memories come from multiple different lives. So that's basically Frankenstein's monster. But it is cool, but traits, you get a lot of different things, don't you? You've got a thing called Deathless Nature. So with that, you have advantage on saving throws against disease and being poisoned, and you have resistance to poison damage. You have advantage on death, death saving throws. How that's, sick is that? That's quite good. You don't need to eat, drink, or breathe. So technically, you would be able to walk underwater it'd still be you good to, have... to role play as that though wouldn't it oh yeah yes, you, well, you could cool. work it but you'd have to change your class you wouldn't unless we were allowing oh no you'd have to buy as a reborn then you, you'd lose so Elias would lose his barbarian yeah true that's still uh, really cool though traits and stuff. Like, it'd be it'd be easy to do the traits, accent you'd just go like oh. go, on, go on it's easy to do the accent pause <laughs> He's Zombie? thinking about it. He's thinking about it. Go on. How would you do it then? Can you not hear me doing it? No. No. <laughs> it's cut off. Like it knows you. Like you like, think you're dying or something. So. <laughs> Should I go closer to the microphone? What do you think you're coughing? Yeah, go closer. Yeah, to really. It just sounds like an off-putting <laughs> old man getting out of a chair. <laughs> <laughs> that does not sound anything like a liar. <laughs> No, it's obviously not supposed. It's supposed to be a zombie, you numpty. Oh, I thought it was supposed to be a liar. Why was that supposed to be a liar? Because you said I, saying it, I we were literally talking about how you could role play like a liar is a dead as a zombie, and then you're like, oh, yeah, but then you just like we were talking about zombies. So then I was like, that's how you would do it, and it would be a lot easier than a fucking Australian accent. Oh, I thought you were gonna like a dead Australian accent. I was like, fucking hell, mate, you got some. Serious oh my god, tickets. that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> how would you? How would you do that? Mate, try it. I'm not alive anymore. Brains. Brains. I need brains. I got killed at Bondi Beach. <laughs> oh, piece in the bloody, bloody bottle, mate. Oh, piss in the bloody bottle, mate. <laughs> <laughs> just, that sounds like you've had too many jars. <laughs> Fucking too many jars of lager, mate. <laughs> too many jars, mate. Few VBs. Get um. So yeah, that's the um. Those are the new classes, subclasses. That you can choose from. We... I think it'd be fun. I mean, like we we're obviously mentioning about role playing and how fun that is. I think these that's... are quite interesting. I think there's 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 scope to, especially with this campaign and where you are and the kind of things you're going to encounter if your characters do die and you want to bring them back there is scope for you to keep exactly. them just, every time you say damp here i just keep thinking wet willy yeah it's I'm... <laughs> it's such a weird name for it when they just call it a vampire wasn't the blood hunter made by Matt critical Mercy role, critical role yeah. yeah legends a little baby that's pretty cool it's what again what you're aspiring to be yeah, I just want my own show. What's that? What's that guy Riff Raff? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're gonna be. Is you're gonna yeah, be my, the Riff my Raff. My main of goal D &D. in life is to blow up and then act like I don't know nobody. Yeah, <laughs> and you'll, you'll you'll forget about us. Yeah, I'm gonna leave leave the DDB podcast in the dust and become a. Yeah, successful. what happens if you got scouted to like another podcast like that had more viewers? Would you leave? Sc <laughs> Scouting. If, if like somebody approached you like, look, I want to pay you like X amount of money a session. We'll give you some merch and all this. Like, will you come and DM this every Sunday night instead of that shitty DBB podcast? <laughs> nah, <laughs> you wouldn't. Nah, I've got, I've got loyalty to my boys. That's that's. I rate that. That's I rate nice. that. What about you, Ad? You... Yeah, man, I'm gone. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> Sniffer merch. 
<laughs> yeah, all all they had to say was merch, and he was like, when "Merch, you what gone?" <laughs> He's already yeah. deleted the DDB channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like uh, fucking hell. Right then, boys, I think that is a good place to end the discussion. Thank you to anyone who has listened through all of our drivel. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, some people found it interesting. And yeah, I don't know. Anyone want to end? A final comment? No, I think that's a very nice way to say it. If you Just, got this, I far, want to suck your cerebral spinal fluid. Oh, Christ. Yeah, that was horrible. I'm sorry, everyone. Can I'm going to sit and cry in my room for. Can, can we end this on now. an apology from you, please, for that statement? Just. Yeah, I would like to formally apologise for the German vampire accent that I just did. Not only did I let my family down, who could probably hear me from the room, I let my friends down, who just had to listen to it. And the worst part is. I let down the three viewers who have listened to this. And to you three, I do apologise the most. Very heartfelt. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>